Okay guys, so we're gonna start off with the way I always start off with my practice. Now I just did a video on this tool recently, last week, talking about how important it is to help two-handers, you know, correct a crooked swing. A crooked swing is something I've struggled with for a very long time, and I use this at the beginning of every practice just to make sure that I'm following the proper rotation of my shoulders and alignment of my shoulders and my wrists and everything in my swing. That way my swing doesn't tuck its way too far behind my back. So we're gonna get started with this, a few no-step drills, a few three-step drills, and then some full approaches to get my body warmed up and going. Okay, that's complete. So now we're gonna move on to doing the exact same thing, but with the ball in my hand. I'm gonna do no step drills with my spare ball, keeping everything lined up in my swing. And then I'm gonna do three step drills with my spare ball, keeping everything lined up. And then of course, full approaches. game with those drills. All of game one was focusing on my swing, making sure the mechanics of my swing were proper. That's taken care of. Now we're going to move into game number two, where I'm going to do full approaches, just again, making sure everything's lined up. And my whole objective actually here is to practice different releases with a full approach. So I'm going to practice nice and rolling the ball straight. And I'm going to practice rotating the ball with different degrees of rotation, just to get my release nice and warmed up and making sure that I'm releasing the ball the proper way. Okay, so essentially my warm-up is all taken care of now. I've done my uh, pre-warm-up drills, or should I say my warm-up drills with the pipe to help make sure my shoulders and everything were lined up right and my swing was working good. Then I moved on to a whole game of using my ball with those exact same drills. And again, just to put some weight in my hands, make sure it's up properly. Then I did a whole game of uh, release drills with the ball, full approaches, you know, keeping everything lined up, making sure I could rotate the ball straight, making sure I could rotate the ball sideways. And now we're into game number three, which is where we're gonna start practicing spares. So the way I practice spares actually is I work on my corner pins first. So I usually do 10 pin, seven pin until I can knock them off the back dead square. Then I move into the next pin in the row. So on the right side, that would be of course the six pin. On the left side, that would be the four pin. And then I move to the next pin in the row. And that of course would be on the right side, the three or the nine or the left side, it would be the two or the eight. And then I finish up with the head pin and the five pin. And that usually takes the whole game to do. I'm just practicing different lines for different spare combinations that I might experience. Okay guys, so we're three games in. I've got uh, five more to go. I'm feeling pretty good, I'm feeling warmed up, everything feels nice and loose. So now I'm going to start working on scores, being consistent. I'm going to start by practicing my B game is what I call it. Uh, the game that I'm less consistent at, which is standing right and rotating the ball as straight as possible and staying on that really tight outside line next to the gutter. So we're going to start with a game working on just that. I'm going to basically try and find the right ball to match myself up for that area of the lane and keep my release as forward as possible keep my ball speed up and just be as consistent as I can hitting that outside line. So and normally speaking, when you're trying to play this extreme outside line, you would want something that's a little bit stronger 
you know, stronger cover, stronger core ball. You, you essentially want that ball to look early and roll. You don't want it to get too clean through the front part of the lane. Of course, that depends on a lot of factors. You know, volume is a key factor in that. What kind of lane surface you're bowling on is also a factor in that. Uh, the type of shot you're bowling on, now normally speaking on the PBA regional side, there's enough volume out there that you can get away with throwing something pretty strong on that outside line and it'll hold and go. This is more than likely Town & Country's house shot. Actually, you know what, it's the uh, Youth City Tournament shot, whatever that is. So there might be a little bit of extra volume. Normally it's like a modified house shot, but not too much. So I'm gonna play with a few balls. I'm thinking something symmetric, something that's you know a little bit weaker so we get the length through the front part of the lane on the right side where you know on a house shot there's not a ton of volume. And the tough part about this is gonna be controlling that entry on the back because anything that's too weak to the front, of course, is gonna to wanna to go hard on the back. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so the first shot I threw uh, my geek, it is pretty shiny, and as far as a you know symmetrical ball, it's pretty late. It's pretty down lane. Uh, you know, it's a little bit stronger than I would prefer, but it gets me that smooth or that clean through the front, sharp on the back. And as you can see, it was really sharp on the back. And I rotated it as far as forward as I could. So we're gonna step uh, actually up something a little bit stronger to the swagger show off. The show off for me is a little bit cleaner through the front but not as clean as the geek, of course. I don't have it polished. I've got it at its out-of-box surface of 3,000 grit, and we'll see what it does. <laughs> okay, so I stuck a little bit on my finish in my slide, but it was still a good shot. I got it rolling forward. I hit the area I was trying to hit, which by the way, I'm trying to get 10 at the arrows, and you know, eight to 10 at the break point in that zone. Again, it's a modified house shot, so. That's the zone I'm trying to play at my break point. I hit it perfect. Show off is too much ball still. So what we're gonna do actually is go to my spare ball. My spare ball is uh, just a pancake weight block here thing, cover ball. Hopefully it'll hold mine. Okay, so it held mine just a little too much. You could see it there. Very clean throughout the entire lane. That's why I use it as a spare ball. Even though it's urethane, and yes, urethane technically hooks early, this particular urethane cover isn't exactly the strongest, so it doesn't grip real well. And I've also got it smoothed out as much as possible because it's a spare ball, I don't want it to grip. Um, so let's add a bit of rotation on this next shot and see if we can get it to uh, face up. Might have to dial the speed back a bit. You can really see that uh, pancake weight block just struggling to make that ball actually motion at all. So I'm going to move right actually with everything, probably two and one, maybe three and one. We'll throw it again and see if it starts to hit a little bit. Can you say two-handed carry? Important thing to remember here, guys, is when you're out here practicing, always stay focused. So. My goal at this point is to practice my B game, that extreme outside line, rotating the ball forward. And I already got into the habit of trying to strike with that ball. So I'm going back to what I need to practice, which is being consistent, hitting the outside line, rolling the ball forward. So the ball reads the front part of the lane and enters the pins nice and smooth. Because if I put a reactive ball in my hand and get around it as much as I'm doing with that spare ball, it's gonna take off and hit the seventh pin. So staying focused, that's key. Okay, there we are. So an entire game focusing on staying as far outside as I can, rolling the ball forward as much as I can. And I ended up with a 176. You know, that's not bad. Of course, I shot my spares during that entire game. I got a little sidetracked, of course, like I said before, where I was trying to strike by getting around the ball. But I refocused back to rolling it forward and then getting my line as tight as possible and being as consistent as possible hitting that line. So now I get to do my favorite part of practice, my A game practice, which of course is my two hander, so hooking the ball. <laughs> Here we go. I need to work.
work on being more consistent. Uh, three different strikes, three different shots entirely. Now granted, I hit the same spot in the arrows, but the ball went to a different spot down right. So this is why we focus on practicing certain things. Hitting my mark up front and at my break point. going nine in a row, well actually 11 in a row, and then a 10 pin, 299, whatever. So if I'm being honest and talking along the lines of, you know, practice, one of the things you always want to practice when you're focusing on your game, trying to score well, is your ball motion. And those last couple strikes that I threw, I did start to see that ball kind of go off the back of the deck at an angle to the right, deflecting. And I figured, yeah, I could rotate it more, but I just decided to let it be how it was going to be and throw the same shot and we'll see what happens. And I kind of felt like a 10 pin was coming. I probably should have moved left with my feet a couple boards and I'm bored with my eyes and rotated it harder, but oh well. Okay, so now we're going to move in and uh, really start to hook the ball. So that was more of my comfort zone, my A game, my normal release. Now we're going to actually start rotating around the ball quite a bit and uh, move left with the right ball in our hands and really practice that increased angle of rotation. I had to show you guys the only true tap in bowling, hockey. If you're wondering, it was a great shot right through the pocket, split the eight and the nine. The ball just, I mean, it deflected just a tiny bit, just enough to leave the eight pin behind. Of course, in classic fashion, how do you follow up a 299? By shooting 167 immediately after that. Now, again, I'm not worried about scores right now. I'm focusing on working on my A game, my B game, my C game. So, honestly, at this point, this would be my C game. You know, hooking it with a lot of rotation, and getting my feet and my eyes in the proper spot and also having the right hand and that plays a lot into it. There's a lot of speed control involved in that. So, you know, I missed, let's see, what did I miss? I missed the three, six, 10 that I shouldn't have. I missed the 10 pin that I shouldn't have. So that is what really drove the scores down. And then in the uh, seventh frame, I had a pocket, uh, what was it, a pocket, uh, oh, that's right, a pocket four nine. So, okay, so now we're gonna move on to game seven and eight. And what I'm gonna do right now is purely focus on getting the highest score possible in two games. Too bad the 299 doesn't count towards that. Doesn't mean I can't do it again. Okay, so game one wasn't terrible. Uh, had a double. Left the uh, three, six, nine, ten. Missed it. Ten pin left. That's one square I really need to work on because I'm terrible at it. And then I went uh, one, two, three, four, five in a row, and then stone ten pin. Missed it because, well, apparently I reverse hooked it just a tiny bit, and that square ball went to the gutter. And then I finished out for a two eighteen. So not a bad game. A few things that I need to really work on in there, which is hitting the spares when I absolutely need them. Should have never missed that 10 pin. The 3, 6, 9, 10 is one of those spares that it's really difficult to pick up unless you're absolutely perfect with your ball placement. 
So that's kind of why I struggle with it so much. All right, on to game number eight. See if we can't get a higher gain here and really get our plus total a little bit higher. Nothing like being consistent, I guess. Uh, last game we shot 212. So in two games, did we end up plus? Yes, that's a good thing. They need to be a lot higher. Out there on the PBA, you gotta get your plus total really high. It's a good start. If this was like the start of a qualifying block for a tournament, don't get me wrong, it's a good way to start. But those little tiny errors there in the middle where you leave us a spare that you should be making and you miss it, is really really a big deal so i need to focus i think on my next practice into picking up those spares in a high pressure situation i just need to figure out a way to put myself in that high pressure situation i have to do some experimentation all right guys so there it is the end of day one of preparing for pba competition at the regional level i definitely enjoyed bringing you guys along uh, part of the reason i started this channel in the beginning was to give you guys an idea of what it's like to make it to the pba level and compete at the pba level so I'm going to be doing these daily vlogs over the next several weeks and couple of months here as I get ready for that competition. And that's going to, of course, lead into my tournament vlogs once I start going to my first couple tournaments there. I'm going to keep also working on the uh, analyzing the two-handed pro series that I started. There's actually quite a few more two-handed pros that I want to get through. And on top of that, I'm going to include as much training content as I can over the next several weeks and months as I get ready. I'm sure I'll stumble across some things that I would uh, want to share with you guys in a separate video. If you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Leave me a like and a comment below. Keep in mind, I do have Patreon memberships available for you guys, three different tiers. Each individual tier will give you a certain number of bowling lessons, virtual bowling lessons from yours truly. You will also be entered in bowling ball giveaways throughout the calendar year. So definitely look into that. The Patreon link is in the description below. And before too much longer here, I hope to have my merchandise store opened up for you guys so you can take a look at some of the stuff I've been working on for t-shirt designs and sweatshirts and stuff like that. I'm still waiting on my samples to come in the mail. So anyway, guys, thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in the next video.